are well structured and well explained and are well communicated lie worth more than the thousand facts and the truth. That is the philosophy of propaganda. So that philosophy has been used in the Western propaganda against China. So they're trying to spread lies at mass scale. They're structuring the lies in a beautiful way. They are explaining it excellent way and their communication methods are very aggressive. So that's why the people across the world they are targeting, they started to talk about the debt trap. But in reality, the facts are different. If we look at the Chinese investment, I will look at the Chinese cooperation in two segments. Number one, investment. Number two, the debt or loan. So majority of the Chinese cooperation lies in the framework of investment. When something is not a debt, how it can be a debt trap? The first part can be negated here. So the majority of cooperation is in the form of investment. Chinese companies are going in different countries. They are investing in their infrastructure. They are investing in their industry and services sectors. So investment which is not a debt, how it can be a debt trap. Second, the debt part of that cooperation. If you look at the debt cop, that is a productive debt. Productive debt means either it's increasing the productivity of industry of that country or it's expanding the say, size of economy of that country. A productive debt can never be a debt trap. You are you productive, productive. productive means they are contributing to work and hence the productivity of that country mm -hmm. and that may are they are increasing they are uh, expanding the size of their economy. Mm -hmm. So they are contributing. When their size is being expanded, it means they will have more financial resources. When the financial sources, you have more financial resources, that means you are in a better position to pay back. So that means if you look at facts and figure, so that is not a debt trap. And either I use a terminology, usually say, so China is doing the debt relief diplomacy. Be why I use this terminology? Because if you look at that, those countries, those countries had been trapped by the Western financial institutions. If you look IMF, if you look World Bank, ADB, or the Paris Club, and other financial institutions, they have trapped the countries in the debt. And they have no other option to listen to them. But China goes there, tell them, look, we will invest in your country. You will have resources to break that trap. That's why the Western institutions or the countries are opposing Chinese investment. Look, to understand this question, we have to look into international relationship philosophy of both. What is international relation philosophy of China? And what is international relation philosophy of the West? If you look at that from the Western side, they say there's no permanent friend or enemy and trust is prime. If we look at Chinese side, they say relationship is the key for international relation. You, if you have to go for the relationship and if there is a difficult relationship, transform the relationship from enemy to the friend, from friend to the brotherhood. So China work on that uh, philosophy. But it does not mean that China is not looking for interest. China is also looking for interest. But the prime goal of China intellectual cooperation is a relation. That's why they came up with an idea. Let's build a win-win cooperation. So that is the philosophy behind this slogan. So their international relation philosophy is different. So they know that we have to earn the benefit, but not at the cost of other countries. We have to develop a formula where both countries will benefit. That's why they call the win-win cooperation. So that's in that context, uh, definitely when the countries are joining BRI, despite all the propaganda, despite all the campaigns, if you look at the number of BRI countries, that are 149 and 32 international organizations. This is a huge. It shows that people still prefer the engagement with China. But it does not mean that China is forcing them. Because China is giving them a better option. Where they can devise their own formula. And where China is not coming with a list of conditionalities. Like uh, human rights, democracy, rule of I don't know, whatever. They will come with self-defined some uh, rules and conditions. China is not coming with these conditions. China says, we respect your model. We respect your governance. We respect your society. We are here to make an effort. Let's build together. That's why many countries are still preferring China. I will explain it by giving one or two examples. 
So how the debt trap has been woven in the past? What was the attitude of the Western financial institution? In 1980, Brazil, they have the debt of 72 billion. From 1980 to 1998, Brazil paid back 146 billion US dollar in the form of interest and the repayment. But at the end of 1998, the total debt of Brazil was 231 US billion dollar. So that caused the debt trap. So how you woven that? That has been seen, we have seen in so many other countries across the world. Pakistan is victim of that. Sri Lanka is victim of that. Look at that in 2019-18, the 47 percent debt of Sri Lanka belongs to the Western private institution. And that was the real cause of that problem in uh, Sri Lanka. Still Sri Lanka is facing the problem due to that private debt. And second debt, debt was coming from ADB, that was 13 percent. That was the real trap. So when they are trapping those countries, why they are trapping those countries? That is fundamental. Because they want to take over their assets. If you look at that around the world, so these institutions, IMF, World Bank and these countries, they all will propagate privatization. Privatization is an other way to take over the assets. So they have their own private institutions or multinational companies who are working with the domestic companies. They prefer to buy the assets of our countries. So they are facilitating takeover of assets of other countries. By woven, they are debt trap. But now, when they see the countries have an alternative. Before China, countries did not have any alternative. They had to work with them, one way or another way. But now, they have an alternative in the form of China. So China is providing them like loans or investment at concession rates. China is not coming with the conditionalities. China is not taking over the or privatizing the assets of any other country. So countries have the, an alternative. That's why that alternative is not being liked by the Western institution. But they cannot do anything. So they started to go for the propaganda. As I said in my opening statement, a well-structured, a well-explained, and a well-communicated lie is a worth more than the 1,000 1, facts. So they are using this terminology. In reality, they have trapped the world. And China is helping the countries to come out of that trap. And they don't like it. And that's why they are trying to do it. Because they are, if you look at the economic strength of those countries, they, use the, they looted the resources of the countries. They colonized the countries. They've taken away their resources. But now, after the China's emergence, they are not able to do the, control the uh, economies. That is the same reason. If we have seen in the last uh, one and a half decade, the debt in China, UK and in USA, their public debt has been skyrocketed. In UK, in 2007, their uh, public debt to GDP ratio was 47%, uh, 43%. But in 2021, it is 103, more than double. If we look at USA, so their public to GDP ratio, the debt ratio was 64% uh, in uh, 2007. In 2021, it's a 128. So why? Because they cannot control the world economy like they were used to. From 2008 onward, China is emerging as an economy which is presenting the alternative to the world. That's why they don't like the China. I think uh, in the present and future and past, we always welcome because we have a good experience. And look at that, China is a reliable um, brother for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe for other countries, China is a friend, but for us, China is a brother. Mm -hmm. So China has always came forward when Pakistan needs them. Mm -hmm. For example, in 2014-15, where Pakistan was losing four to five billion US dollars annually due to the electricity shortage. And Pakistan infrastructure needed, uh, transport infrastructure needed 1.2 billion US dollars to rehabilitate it. Poverty was around about 40%. Food insecurity was 58.8 percent. On top of that, Pakistan was fighting war on terror. And no country was willing to invest in Pakistan. Even the ally of war on terror, USA, UK and other countries, they were running a campaign against Pakistan. It is not a safe place. At that time, China came. So that's why, although we have the history of the relationship of brotherhood, as I said earlier, but this incident also showed that the people say that, look, China is our real brother who came at a time when we needed them the most. 
I think that is a heart of liberal economy, capitalism. The big fish eat the small fish. Mm -hmm. That is happening. Mm -hmm. So the big fish, they are using their power mm -hmm. of money to buy that uh, bell there. And then they are dealing with the government to get a better deal. Mm -hmm. For example, 2007-8, the financial crisis, who got the better deals? Mm -hmm. JP Morgan mm -hmm. and big banks. So, but, but the people were suffering. Mm -hmm. Look at around now, in the even COVID-19, mm -hmm. who got the big deals? big companies mm -hmm. and the same is happening in the financial institutions. So they say, oh, look, it's a market, the capitalism, it's a market. So it, it can happen. But in reality, that is not the case. Mm -hmm. If you look at that, when the big players are facing the problem, why the government is supporting them? And that is the key difference between Chinese governance model and Western governance model. Mm -hmm. Chinese governance model say people-centric. Yeah. People is prime. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, the so market will decide. So that is a key. Mm -hmm. So where they cannot compete with China. Uh -huh. So they are only, they are then their last resort is propaganda. Mm -hmm. 